this research that we're doing that I'm going to share with you, what we do here was done by the Open Science Institute. You can go to that link, you can click and you can be part of supporting research. And for example, if you want to support cardiovascular research, research you can contribute. And when you do contribute, I never like to take anything for nothing. You contribute money. We also give you back a scholarship to take the Truth, Freedom and Health course. So go look at that or bhshiva.com slash join. Now, in the research that we did with Cytosol, again, this is an example of not a correlation study, but it was going from correlation to causation. So as I mentioned in this study, people have found green tea, consuming green tea, lowered transplant rejection. Pretty cool. So what we did with Cytosol, which was published in this paper, was we actually understood how that occurred. Notice it says bioactive compounds in green tea may improve transplant tolerance, a computational systems biology analysis. Notice what we're saying here. It's not an epidemiological analysis, but a systems biology analysis. So what we did here was we literally understood the composition of green tea, the caffeine, the minerals, the amino acids, the polyphenols. And by the way, I'm not going to go through this in detail for the interest of time, but there's an entire video I did on green tea and our research earlier. So please go check that out. But what we did here was we understood all the compounds in green tea, the molecules, and then we understood the molecular mechanisms, the actual causes. We went through all the research and we pieced together causation, right? How individual molecules react and how the components of green tea, EGCG, which is one of them, or epicatechin, these are molecules in green tea, how they actually affect the causation affecting other systems which promote transplant tolerance. And we identified those anti-inflammatory mechanisms and how it works, why it works. And then we did the same to find out how other compounds in green tea, EGCG, epicatechin, and gallic acid actually lower transplant rejection, essentially downregulate pro-inflammatory mechanisms. So this is very powerful that we were able to identify the actual compounds, identifying the mechanisms. And this is what I mean by the why. So we find out how green tea promotes transplant tolerance and it inhibits transplant rejection through these pro through down regulating pro inflammatory mechanisms and up regulating anti inflammatory mechanisms. So, I wanted to give you that as a data point to understand how you can use system science to understand causes. And so, whenever you hear on the news, oh, because if you don't have causation, you can be really bamboozled into a narrative. Oh, I, you know, I did something here and over this happened. And we see that in every major topic. And this is why the world, or the United States in particular, are split into left and right, pro and anti, because the news media and essentially academics who can be paid, because they're now practicing the oldest profession in the world, and you, you can think about what that is, you can essentially just use correlation to manipulate people. But if you go down to understand causation, which is a much harder thing to do, you'll understand, well, that may be true, maybe it's not true. And that's what's also true with this example here, with the example that we're going to go through with the fish and the melanoma. So that's what I wanted to talk about. And one of the power Powerful things is when you really understand causation, and what we've done with Cytosolve is we've created a whole technology to understand causes. When you understand causation, you can really go solve some very powerful problems. And I'll come back to this because I want to share with you that using Cytosolve, for example, we actually understood the mechanisms of inflammation and pain in the body. And we went through all different natural compounds and we discovered a set of compounds that do that. And I'll come back and share that with you shortly. But what's happening in science is that you can easily have this sort of what I call attack on freedom because you can have what I call the clickbaiting. And this is sort of the clickbaiting that the New York Times did. Can your diet really affect your skin cancer risk? Now, the New York Times really shouldn't do this because if some other newspaper do it, they'd say, oh, that's clickbaiting. But if the New York Times does it, and you know, they're very clever when they ask it as a risk. But the interesting thing is that there really goes to push a narrative in a very subtle way to assume the discussion is over, that this longitudinal study has shown it. But the reality is we want to understand the causation. So just like the green tea example, if you want to really get to the heart of health, we need to know what are the potential mechanisms, mechanisms of action. You may want to write that down. In biology, we call that MOA, mechanisms of action. That is very, very different than correlation. Correlation is input output, but understanding mechanisms of action is saying, okay, Okay, I did this input, what were all the pathways that it went through to get this output? That's a much deeper complexity. You have to understand all the connections and that's called the mechanisms of action. So what were those mechanisms of action? Well, we haven't done the research, but just like when Einstein looked at Newton's sort of discovery or his repeated observations of the relationship between force, mass one and mass two, force and gravity, he was trying to explain the why, the causes, and that led to the theory of relativity. So in any aspect, 
aspect of science. One is you can understand the what, but we understand the why. And the why requires you put forward some ideas, new theories. With Cytosol, we can actually go understand it. But what are the me potential mechanisms of action here that fish intake causes cancer? Well, here's some ideas. And some of you have put this out there. Someone says here, there's radiation in fish from Alaska. Someone just put that there. Someone else put, is it pollutants? So there could be various things, all right? And that's what we do because if we're wa wanting to understand the why, we want to do that. So here are some of the potentials of the why could be, right? Maybe there's the mercury is ubiquitous now in the biosphere, including oceans. Is there an association between higher mercury levels and skin cancer? That's already been established. So there's been a number of papers written that shows that higher mercury levels and skin cancer are correlated. They don't know the mechanisms, but that's been established. So if you eat a lot of fish, is it the mercury? And the mercury consumption in the U.S. is mostly from fish, mostly from fish. And by the way, this was done in the United States, the study. Hence, there's a potential link between fish intake and skin cancer. So again, what we're proposing here is a potential causation, right? So this is the why we're proposing. Another thing that we were thinking about is a processing of fish. How was the fish processed? Raw? Because what this research said, it was all non-fried stuff. So non-fried, the canned, the boiled, and the raw. It appears that these kinds of processing was a high correlation, just like tuna, to the skin cancer, all right? And what does, so the, the mechanisms action, or what happens when you fry something and you don't fry something? So is it possible that you have fish with a lot of mercury and maybe when you fry the hell out of it, it's doing something in an interesting way that's protecting the mercury, if in fact is a mercury, from affecting you? Or is it parasites? Is it sushi? So these are some very, very interesting questions. And that's why many years ago, research came out that said, oh, if you eat eggs, you're going to get heart disease. And for 20, 30 years, people stopped eating eggs. And again, it was one of these correlation studies, when in fact, it turns out if you soft boil an egg, don't overcook the hell out of it, but soft boil it and leave the yolk intact, there's lecithin in there, some very good nutrients, you need a certain amount of good cholesterol, but actually helps break down of the bad cholesterol, right? So once you understand mechanisms, you can say, wait, whoa, 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 what do you mean that everyone should stop eating eggs, or everyone should stop consuming fish? And a lot of people stopped eating eggs. And if you really think about it, I mean, we can do a whole series on this, there's a huge correlation between you know, consuming one or two eggs and the reduction in stroke, the reduction in heart disease, the reduction in cholesterol, because mechanistically there's constitutive materials that actually help that. So we have to be very careful when we just look at these correlation studies. That's really the point that I wanted to make here. Now, in summary, if you look at this, going back to the mercury piece here, now there could be potential contaminants, right? There's also someone put up there. There could be other things, PCBs, polychlorinated biphenyls, right? There's a plastic right? The dioxins, the arsenic, these things are also in fish and they've also been correlated with cancer. So could, could, there could be these other things. So in summary, what we want to really take away is that this study found that fish consumption is positively correlated with skin cancer. Consumption of fishes like tuna and non-fried fish increase non-fried fish. It had to be non-fried, increase the risk of malignant and skin zero skin, which is malignant and stage zero, which is that means this cancer hasn't spread those kinds of cancer. On the other hand, consumption of fried fish was not positively correlated, and the study did not show any causation between fish consumption and skin cancer risk. That means they didn't show causation, they showed correlation. And the potential causes may include many things, mercury, PCBs, dioxin, arsenic, etc. So this is now a virgin area of research that people could, could explore. Before I close and I share with you a couple of other things, I want to let everyone know that I alluded to this before, but when you understand causation, you can actually create products that work. You can can identify why and you can create healthy products so what we did was we actually used cytosol this causative approach to actually discover a product by the way cytosol has been used for 16 years by many many companies but we look at the mechanisms of pain and inflammation and we were able to discover a set of ingredients which actually we're talking about negative things which could cause cancer but there are materials that you can take that actually will do beneficial things and, and let me just share with you the mv25 video and they'll come back and we'll wrap up Millions of people suffer every day from painful discomfort and swelling, but most pain medications come with harsh side effects, and many alternative supplements have little scientific backing. That's why we at Cytosolve created MV25. MV25 was formulated using the Cytosolve Computational Systems Biology Platform, a technology for precision and personalized health invented by Dr. Shiva during his doctoral research at MIT. 
This formulation is the result of computing trillions of potential combinations of biomolecular interactions, derived from thousands of peer-reviewed scientific papers published across four decades by 68 research institutions to discover an optimal synergy of compounds that downregulate biomarkers of discomfort and normal swelling. Hi, I'm Barbara Ann. My hands would cramp up so that I couldn't hold cards or knit or crochet. And they would go like that. Not have to use this when I played cards with my grandkids. And I'd start taking that MB25. After a bit, I was able to hold cards in my hand. Very, very little cramping, hardly at all anymore. MV25. Hi, my name is Sandy. I'm a Taekwondo instructor. I tore my ACL during Taekwondo. I had a lot of pain and limited mobility. I've been taking the MV25 for about six months now. After the first week, I noticed a big difference. After the second week, almost literally no pain. My name is Jeremy and I suffer from a lower back problem. Hurt my back at work years ago and I can go to the chiropractor, do all kinds of different things and nothing seems to help. And I decided to try MV25. I didn't notice a difference immediately, but within a few days, the pain went away and it stayed away. I've continued to take it. And even when I do things that I shouldn't do, it seems to go away a lot quicker than it ever did before. MV25 is certified clean, 100% non-GMO, made in America and GMP certified for good manufacturing practices. MV25 25 is cytosolve optimized, which means that this formula has been engineered to maximize benefits while minimizing toxicity based on current research curated by cytosolve. As the science advances, so will this formulation. This is our promise. Order online at mv25.life. Consult your doctor before taking any supplement or medication and use as directed. MV25. We hopefully emphasize to everyone the importance for taking a systems approach, which really brings the causation. Systems science answers the why, and it shows interrelationships. So when we want to look at the world around us, this simple diagram that I have right here gives you the why, right? If we want health, we have to really pursue freedom and truth. If we want truth, we need to pursue freedom and health. If we want freedom, we need truth and health. And why do I say that? Because one of the things we teach, and when you take the course, we put up the vashiva.com, when you take when you become a truth, freedom, and health, we call it a truth, freedom, and health warrior, and you can do that at vashiva.com, is that the idea is to raise your consciousness to recognize that you can take a systems approach to everything around us. So we took a systems approach to understand this relationship. You can look take a systems approach to understand the world around you. And freedom, the ability to move information, matter, and energy is essential, which is what transport is, the phenomenon of information, matter, and energy moving freely. Freedom on social media to talk, freedom over the wires, when you can have that or freedom without being canceled, then we can really have science. We can get down into the causative features, really practice a scientific method. We get to truth. And both those things are essential to under understand what's right for the health of our body. Because if you just do causation, you may miss this deeper. I mean, just do correlation. You may go 20 years. Oh, I'm not going to eat that thing. I'm going to not eat salt. I'm not going to eat this. And that's what the entire field of academic medicine has been. It's been correlation based. It's not been systems based. So the health of people have been affected. If you're not healthy, physically, mentally, emotionally, you can't really fight for freedom and pursue truth. So that's why I thought this was a double whammy. You understand this research, but you can also go a little bit more detailed and understand what's going on in terms of the difference between causation and correlation. So if you want to learn more, I encourage you all to go to vashiva.com slash join. I want to really inspire all of you to become system scientists, get the book System and Revolution, and come to the orientation. Go to vashiva.com slash orientation. I'm there every Thursdays twice, and we can have a conversation.